Y'all, so I'm a builder, but I'm also a realtor. So I'm one of y'all. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for having us today. Um, this year, I'm the president of the North Mississippi Humboldt Association. I've been involved with the Humboldt Association uh, on the board since 2014. I've been a member uh, for years prior to that. Uh, and, uh, my company's been a member. Decades actually. I've been in the, the building industry my entire life. Um, so and it's a family business, like much of these guys here, they kind of grew up in it. And uh, closer? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, thank you for Bank of England. I was waiting for the British accent. I <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank y'all for having us. Uh, I just want to thank Amanda Fowler. Uh, she's a member of our board, our board, and uh, she's been a rock star uh, to work with. Uh, she helped put this whole thing together. Uh, you know, it kind of started. Uh, I went to the International Builder Show in you know, Orlando in January and uh, had the opportunity to do seminars with guys with PhDs, the, the chief economist for Freddie May, or Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac as well as the chief economist for the National Association of Home Builders. And I just learned a ton there. And uh, definitely encourage y'all to not only join the uh, National Association of Home Builders through the Northwest Mississippi, North Mississippi Association, but also uh, trying to go to that show. It's in Orlando again next year. Uh, really, really great opportunities. They have sales uh, coaching there as well for uh, new home sales training. Uh, just as a wealth of knowledge, and, and that's where a lot of the information I'll be sharing with you today came from. Uh, it's from that, that conference, as well as uh, pretty much all the data uh, came from NAHB's website or local county or municipality uh, planning departments. Uh, but, uh, today we have uh, Johnny McBride, he's the Sky Lake construction, and uh, they I'll take it on, you know, this is kind of my synopsis of what I think they do as a company, but uh, Johnny, does, they do quite a bit of volume, and uh, they've been uh, so kind of for many years, uh, you know, it's a family business for them, and uh, so that's one perspective of seeing kind of more of a volume over a couple hundred times, or two to three hundred times this year, uh, the projection, and then uh, Chris Massey, of course, he, uh, a lot of people know him, you know, and you know, same thing, family business, they do uh, market homes, uh, pre sales, some custom homes, and then uh, Sean Green uh, with Dream Home Construction. Of course, you know, he does uh, a lot of custom homes and, and specs and market homes, and, as well as pools. I know he's been saying, I wish I, I wish I got it. I'll leave that to you. But uh, anyway, so I do, uh, you know, pre sales, like custom homes. But also, uh, I do a good bit of commercial construction as well. So, uh, but thank y'all. So, uh, now, so a little bit about you know, us here. So I'm just going to share some information. Uh, of, of, of. And at the end, so I'll go through this data here, and then we'll do a QA. and a uh, We've got some questions that were submitted to the Realtor Association uh, that I think Amy is going to read. And it'll be kind of a fluid platform. Um, you know, we'll, we'll answer as best we can. And uh, uh, so we'll discuss. See where that goes. All right. So first, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the National Association of Home Builders and what its purpose is. <coughs> so these are the five pillars of the National Association of Home Builders. Advocacy, expertise, knowledge, networking, and savings. So on the advocacy level, <coughs> Uh, NHB fights for its members on Capitol Hill, state houses, and communities where they do business. Uh, we work hard to defeat excessive regulations and protect our members' bottom line. Our advocacy, effort, advocacy efforts include educating policymakers and administration, building, uh, helping build social relationships, uh, and help uh, NHB grow grassroots efforts in DC. Uh, also, uh, they advocate on behalf of members on a wide range of issues 
including tax code, federal housing programs, regulatory relief, environmental laws, building codes, OSHA, building materials, housing finance, and more. Uh, single win in the policy arena can save builders thousands of dollars on every home uh, they build. And of course, that just goes straight down to the home buyer. Uh, in recent years, the association, I would see efforts and other members have been offering and have provided members with minimum value. Just on average, I say it's about uh, over 6,200 uh, per house. Uh, that was in 2020. And I can tell you firsthand some uh, some things that the local association uh, has has uh, worked with uh, cities and energy companies uh, to uh, work out smart ways uh, to uh, do this. Is basically a better way to put it. But uh, we, we've seen, you know, whether it's you know some uh, seismic laws or shear wind laws that they were trying to implement that really don't apply to our area. Uh, we were able to, to fight that. And it saved several thousand dollars in the house. Uh, and then recently, there was, uh, we worked with North Central to work out a way uh, to run electrical conduit to the houses uh, that benefited uh, everyone. So, that's just a couple things that we've been working on lately. And then, next with expertise. Uh, in addition to its broad advocacy efforts, NAHB supports its members through extensive economic analysis and research that provides insight into the housing market through workforce training programs and through communication efforts that take the housing industry's unique perspective to policymakers and the public. So that that's kind of goes back to um, you know, creating some of those associations and organizations like the uh, Mississippi Housing Institute, which I'll talk a little bit about here in a minute, as well as many other uh, arms of so, uh, and then knowledge. So, um, when I was at the International Book Show, like I said I had the opportunity to sit through you know, all kinds of sales training seminars, you know, best practices seminars, you know, lean construction, green construction, uh, you know, all different kinds of stuff, as well as uh, networking. But, uh, so, the, uh, some of the educational programs and certifications and designations are uh, certified aging and place specialists, certified green professional builder, certified graduate builder, certified graduate remodeler, certified new home markets professional, certified new home sales professional, and certified professional builder designation, uh, which is offered uh, through the Mississippi Housing Institute, which actually the Humboldt Association of Mississippi helped sponsor. We work very closely with them on that. Uh, everybody still hear me okay? Uh, the networking, of course, um, every pro knows that networking can be a key to business success. That's why NHB focuses on providing ample opportunities for members to network. And that's a huge opportunity, you know, especially on the local level. I've had several uh, guys just you know wanting to get into the home building industry. I know, like, like I mentioned, I was up, up here. I uh, kind of grew up in it, but uh, there's, there's people out there that they want to get involved in home building and where they start. Um, there's a wealth of uh, information uh, through NAHB that you can literally uh, you know, kind of walk you through and get you certified and uh, help you become a, a builder and also offer some mentorship. So the networking, uh, yeah, that's where that mentorship uh, comes along. I've had builders you know, ask me, do we locally have a Mentorship program. I, I tell them no, but I can pick up the phone anytime and call Sean, which I do all the time, or call Chris or Johnny or other builders and you know have questions about you know, what's the best practice to do this or what are you doing in this situation. So just the networking is also part of the knowledge transfer. And then the savings. Um, so uh, being a part of the Humber Association, you have uh, all, all kinds of opportunities uh, to save money. Uh, Anywhere from, you know, we have national accounts with Lowe's all the way down to rental cars. Uh, and so this goes on. And uh, again, I encourage you to go to the NHB website, check out some of those, uh, those programs. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about, you know, some of the issues we've, we've seen in the home building industry. Actually, let me back up real quick. I've got some uh, data. Uh, originally gave this 
presentation to the Rotary Club in Hernandez. So that was in February, uh, end, of, end of February. And at that time, uh, there were only 108 homes for sale on MLS. And uh, I think I pulled it last, and that was, that's not, that's in the Southern County only, not including Dave and Marshall County. Uh, last time I pulled the Southern County, I think we're at 443. Some of y'all may know that sound about right. Um, so you, you can see the, the number of homes available are growing. Uh, and one statistic I, I, I heard at NHB um, is that currently one out of three homes on the market are new construction. That number is typically one out of 10. This is the first year. And I'll tell you a sounding number that one out of three of new construction. So if I came out that and I pulled that figure on the local level, and uh, in true, 44 of those 108 in uh, February were new construction. And then there were, at that time, there were 650 penny sales and 400,000 new construction. I wish I pulled put the data up there for recently, but uh, I think the existing homes, uh, available homes, have been growing here, uh, as well as the, the catching up to that uh, the new construction. So some of the challenges we've seen, of course, is, uh, labor, labor issues, skilled labor. Uh, we actually uh, are having our November luncheon at the Southern County Career uh, Tech Campus in November. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the students are cooking for us. And but uh, Career Tech, you know, we want to partner with Career Tech uh, organizations here locally because uh, we need more skilled labor, we need more electricians, HVAC, plumbers, um, carpenters. That's a, that's a big bit of a challenge is trim carpenters because, you know, I know myself, you have one or two good trim carpenters, you have extra on house going around, and that sometimes is a delay in the building process of, uh, you know, building houses in LinkedIn because we're short of labor. <laughs> Um, building material costs increases. I know y'all are <laughs> there. So uh, increases we've seen. Uh, this is you know the beginning of 2020 figures, which uh, they're still around that number because lumber has come down. But other materials like concrete have continued to go up. Uh, drywall has continued to increase, um, and as well as electrical uh, supplies, that has gone up immensely as well. So, at the date of this graph, uh, the cost, just lumber prices, increase the cost on your average home by $30,000. That will cut into your budget. So, you can kind of see the historical data on lumber. Okay. You know, pretty cyclical there. And then we see the spike. You know, why do we see that spike? The, uh, a lot of the saw mills uh, projected, you know, uh, building to decrease. Well, it went the opposite way. And then they had labor issues. I've got slides come up there. But this is the next slide is uh, a closer snapshot of where we are today with lumber prices. Let me see if we peak. Middle of last year, uh, beginning of last year, another peak. The beginning of this year, but now uh, lumber prices are trending. So this is domestic sawmill output. Should you see how the output is really increasing with COVID? Just like a lot of people, a lot of those suppliers, they anticipated a demand decrease. We all know the opposite way. Well, actually, I just read an article. Where we just uh, passed uh, the Canadian tariffs uh, cut. So uh, this in this article is from NAHB. Uh, so I'll just read some of it here. NAHB's tariffs efforts calling on the Biden administration to eliminate or at least at the very least reduce the duties on Canadian lumber shipments in the United States has taken a step in the right direction, with the Department of Commerce moving to cut tariffs by more than half and can Canada seeking a new legal solution that would completely eliminate the tariff. So basically we cut the Canadian uh, lumber import tariff from 17.99% to 
down to 8.59%. So this just this just happened within the week. So that is good news for longer. Other materials, like I mentioned, uh, have no work. Asphalt is uh, it is up quite a bit. Uh, these are volatile prices. And then, like I mentioned, the yeah, there's a drywall, concrete, electrical supplies. Uh, next, I have some local figures. Uh, so, again, I pulled these from planning apartments, building apartments. And so, this is the historical building permit data. Uh, it also includes all municipalities. See, we've come up quite a ways from 2009. And then uh, this is the unincorporated, this is just county, just in the, in the growing DeSoto County. So we have a little, a little bit of a trough there. All right. I don't know. Uh, so these are the uh, 2021 permit numbers uh, that were provided uh, to me. So you can kind of see the breakdown. Uh, South Haven uh, would be uh, the largest municipality uh, with the highest number of permits pulled, followed by Old Ranch in all 21. And then, of course, uh, Hernando. And in a lot of these areas, uh, the growth is determined by utilities, water, sewer. Uh, you, know, you can't park and develop a lot of lots uh, if there's no utilities. Some of these more rural areas, you know, the Western part of one lake or Walls area. Okay, so this, this information, you know, basically I took um, the same snap time from January to July of 21 to January and July of 22. So these are the most recent building permit figures uh, that are available. Uh, so you can see quite a, quite a trend downward. Actually, no, that's a trend. I have a slide of this, but I talked to all the grants in the month of July. They had one residential building permit pulled. I thought, I thought they misspoke. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a, a trend of fewer permits. Uh, this is a national single family permit uh, data. So we're down. So year to date, so this time last year, uh, we're down 3.6% across the United States in single family permits. The South, uh, and I'll show some more data in a second, the South is faring better than other parts of the country. And then, of course, you see the multi family building permits have uh, increased tremendously. Uh, a lot of that uh, is due to the lack of affordability um, in single family homes. So, a lot of multi family being built. Have to live somewhere. And this is uh, the forecasted single family starts. Uh, this was forecasted at, at the end of 21. Uh, they were forecasting you know, kind of flat uh, growth uh, with the anticipation of interest rates going up. You know, we have historical interest rate, uh, low interest rates this past year. And uh, really, the, the consensus was amongst uh, all the economists with, with it, you know, we need to slow down. You know, uh, we've been so red hot. We actually need the supply chain to heal, you know, so we can help bring down some of these material costs. So we can, uh, you know, have get back to more normal uh, lead times on materials. Annual starts date. This is kind of a two year snapshot or so, uh, 16 month snapshot. And uh, we see multi family. So, again, you know, so families are, are trending downward this year from a lot of increase in the spring. You know, we we're coming out of the initial shock of COVID. And then uh, the only family continues to have pretty solid growth there. And then I uh, want to show some uh, information about the uh, housing market index. And read up there. It's uh, based on a monthly survey of builder members uh, designed to take the pulse of the single housing uh, market. 
ask them to respond. You know, how that basically a send them how you know, what's your what are your sales looking like? What's your projection across the board here? And it's on a scale of one to one. So um, you can kind of see how the HMI follows the start. So uh, you know, this is set that of how they're receiving the housing industry and then yeah, they're pulling back, they're going to pull back on point permits or starting to have That's going all the way back to five. So currently we're at 83. And 83 on the 100 points annuals. Excuse me, that was that was the uh, end of uh, beginning of 2022. And then today we've fallen uh, quite quite a bit. We're at around 53, I believe. We're 30, 30 points uh, <coughs> lower uh, than we were. So. Um, Here's uh, the national, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I know this chart's a little kind of overwhelming to look at, it is for me, but uh, basically just gating, you know, where we're at in July, uh, the HMI is 55. And then at the bottom is interesting, you know, the figure, basically, uh, these builders that were surveyed, uh, you know, where they, uh, you know, where they see the next six months going, uh, what's their traffic for prospective buyers then? Uh, this is regional. So again, the South is very better than other parts of the country. I think a lot of people have are moving to more affordable parts of the country. Actually, uh, we had our state home builder convention in uh, Gulf Shores in June. And uh, one of the builders on the coast, uh, Brandon Elliott with Elliott Homes, uh, he's kind of spearheading an initiative uh, to meet with the governor. <coughs> uh, so we've got a meeting with the governor. So basically, our uh, conference Mississippi home builders are using innovative methods. Uh, to market and sell homes to larger numbers uh, to buyers outside the state. So basically, we're uh, working with the governor and the Mississippi Development Authority. Um, we come up with some strategies. Okay, how, how can we bring these people in from uh, you know more expensive states, such, uh, you know, California, Illinois, uh, to Mississippi, where it is still more affordable here? Um, I know several people in uh, at this one building on the coast, and he would say. I think he said 30% of his buyers on the coast are from California, which is you know pretty big, pretty big number. Kind of like you are seeing in folks in that state or other similar more expensive states than in here, but uh we are seeing a trend. So uh, kind of kind of uh, interesting matches. So instead of you know just trying to track buyers local, we have got an initiative through the NHB to the Mississippi Hunter Association to draw. Uh, people from all over the country. So that's a little uh, information there. So I think uh, now we're going to uh, do a Q&A. Questions submitted. Uh, read some of the questions. This is going to be kind of fluid, and uh, you know, we'll answer as best we can. Afterwards, uh, afterwards, I'm going to give. Uh, uh, these guys opportunity to kind of tell you a little bit about maybe some projects they have going on uh, as well maybe some services they offer and uh then at the end uh we've got some announcements got some uh, events coming up i'd like to share with y'all i hope that wasn't too depressing uh, <laughs> oh, okay here's, here's the good number. so the good news is we're still about 1.1 uh, 1 .1 to 1.3 million homes short across the whole United States. So there's still a housing shortage. People still have to live somewhere. So uh, we didn't think, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, please slow down a little bit, but uh, I think it was anticipated. Uh, you know, we didn't like, you know, knew how red hot it was. It was. And uh, but, you know, housing will always be here. You always see professional growth. But uh, 
but uh, we're still thinking about it. Quick question about the slide. Can we get those slides somehow? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Problem with that? Yo, share the slides. Yeah, I'll send them to Amanda. We'll, she'll get them out. Thank you. So we're going to start with the questions that we've got on paper, and then we will take some for analysis. First one we've got is where do you see home prices going in the next 12 to 24 months? Since I've already been talking, I'll keep talking. Um, so uh, you know, we've seen pretty drastic uh, increases in uh, cost, cost per square foot, also sales per square foot, um, more uh, faster accelerated rate, at a best accelerated rate, I think we've seen, I would say. Guys, you want me to more than I do about that, but uh, you know, I think with uh, the interest rates going up, you know, the housing is slowing. I think they'll kind of remain where they are. I don't see them going down because the majority of the costs of construction, the cost to develop lots, that is not going down. Uh, you know, one thing we've seen is you know, a lot of contractors or suppliers, you know, they, they've kind of reached this level, uh, this, this price point. And if they've, they've set their companies up for that price point, as well as, you know, I guess calculating inflation, uh, they're probably not going to go backwards. So, but I think we'll kind of hang around the price per square foot we're, we're seeing right now. Uh, I don't think we'll see uh, that go down. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, next one is, is the supply for materials improving? <laughs> Man, I think it's improving some, somewhat as far as uh, availability. We're seeing shorter lead times on some material windows and whatnot for the most part. Part on um, maybe some of your custom stuff's taking a little longer. Um, I don't see about the same, but uh, but for the most part, I man, I think the, the shortage is still. I mean, you're still having to order out. Our planning has gone from ordering out two weeks ahead of time to two months ahead of time on most things. When we're kind of seeing that stay the same still. Yeah. I have seen. Uh, you know, during you know, the length and lead times, you know, sometimes you have to make adjustments on where you're getting materials. And, you know, so they're, they're you know, buying bulk. I know Chris was saying earlier, you know, they buy a lot in bulk. I know John talking about this too, but uh, I have seen uh, 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 the lead times on cabinets getting a little better. Uh, and I think garage doors should get a little better as well. So. You have a projection for material costs on, you know, we looked at your PowerPoint. Um, I think we kind of hit a peak, maybe. I mean, it's gotten. Yeah, I think the material with lumber, uh, I think, you know, we're, because that's very much. Um, Totally lumber still dropping and and everything everything else is kind of still climbing up. The lumber is dropping, so hopefully it's going to stay balanced out. So we're all over for so that's kind of the best case scenario. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, when lumber got just ridiculous there, I know a lot of guys were pouring slabs and just sitting tight and waiting until lumber you know would come down a little bit, and then we were paying thirty thousand more on the lumber package. On a uh, two hundred eight thousand, you know, three hundred, say three hundred thousand dollar house, I mean, that that pretty much your profit right there, you know. And your your comps have not, you know, you don't have the comps for it. So, but luckily, there there's a lot of the people, you know, have a lot, have a lot of cash there. I'd like to say something about the lumber. Um, the I was talking to a lumber salesman the other day, and a lot of these 
Mark, a lot of these big companies are seeing the slowdowns where they were having three uh, lines running. They're cutting back to back to one line. So I don't think lumber prices, I think they're going to fluctuate. They will not probably go up as much as they have in the past. But I think we're probably at bottom where prices are going to fluctuate. I don't see them going down a tremendous amount. And I know as far as us, just about every week, we're still getting at least one something coming in that is going up. So at least uh, some weeks there's two or three items going up from the beginning of the year. Uh, appliances have went up almost 20%. Uh, the coming, starting now through the end of the year, all your AC units are going to be going up anywhere from 20-ish percent because of a new federal regulation that is going into effect. So, um, so prices of new homes, they are not coming down. So if you have people that are thinking that, well, I'm going to wait out the market, the, the new homes that are being started are not going to be, they may not be in the beginning any more money, but they are not coming down. So it's it's no better time to buy than today. So, <clears throat> so we all know that we have a shortage of houses around 200,000, maybe some smaller houses. Is there any chance that we're going to start seeing more of those in the smaller range, lower range? We can't really build in that price range. The problem is with your lot costs, your lot costs, your lot costs, that's what a lot of realtors and a lot of people don't understand. Your lot cost dictates the price of your house because you have to figure the square footage. So the more square footage you got will break down the lot cost. So a lot of people don't understand that. Point, but that's why I have people call me every day when we build a $300,000 house and my start point is like 475 right now. What's the square footage of that? Uh, about 2,600 heated, 2,700 heated, two car garage. Johnny does a lot of the development. I think most of your, I don't think you'll see any more 1,500 square foot that's not already approved. Most of your county, most of the cities are not, everything is, you know, really hit 2,000 and up. There's a couple that are still at 1,800 go. And, you know, and uh, kind of to Sean's point, I mean, it does take a, it is taking a bigger house now. Because I mean, 1600 square foot is pretty much one floor. And I mean, it's it, for the profit point, it really needs to be a, a little bit more. I know for for us, it needs to be a little bit more than 1600 to even to make a profit. And uh, but and I don't think there's going to be any more fruit that are approved like that from what we're seeing. So, you, you, know, you, you see, I've been here you know, like sewer pipe. You know, that, that's an increase in bonnets or storm, storm pipe. Just the materials that develop the less the asphalt. I mean, all that is calculated by lot costs, not just the raw land costs. I mean, have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sewer pipes, like any kind of pipe, any kind of PVC pipes gone up anywhere from two to like sewer pipe used to be twelve dollars a foot, and now it's twenty-seven dollars a foot. And that's just in a matter of 18 months. Asphalt's gone up two dollars a yard. Uh curb, you know, concrete's gone up. <coughs> Yeah. So much, I mean, so the whole from start to finish of a subdivision, just the raw lot costs have gone up over over the last two years to the point that the lot you, mean, you can't sell a lot. I think the days of thirty and forty thousand dollar lots, and that's what it costs to put them, you know, put them in before you buy the land. Now, yeah, and um, you know, to Johnny's point about you know the, the municipalities they are not wanting to improve. Uh, square footage is you know, really much below or if any below 2,000 square feet. That's, you know, of course, that's driving your, your starter home price. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think there's could be a lot of conversations to be had with, you know, mayors and boards uh, to work on that. Because I think they, they get uh, affordable housing and low-income housing uh, confused. And I think those are different. Um, I think there's a way to uh, do affordable housing in a, in a nice way with, you know, uh, covenants, HOAs, you know, and uh, it not, you know, be a low income. I think, but I think a lot of you know, boards are kind of mixing those up a bit in their head. But, um, 
you know, because then you know, we, you know, if they allow us to do a 1500 square foot, you know, house, you know, that'll bring the uh, price point down, but we're still paying, you know, a good bit for the lot. So the price per square foot on that 1500 will be, of course, much higher than the price per square foot on a 3000 square foot house. So, you know, so then, then we're getting into working with the appraisers and, you know, what that is going to look like. So, but, you know, I think there's, there's a, Obviously, it's a big thing. I've talked to a lot of realtors. You know, do you have anything under three hundred, or do you have anything, you know, low three hundreds? And it's just difficult with all the costs as well. And then the unincorporated areas of Desoto County, um, you know, building on an eight and a half lot, there's no way to build a fifteen hundred square foot house. And and to the point, you're not getting everybody wants two thousand plus square feet as a minimum starting point and um and especially in the county a lot of this has to do with the availability of utilities so you you have to generally go with the bigger lot anyway but um but yeah i mean if you can get your lot sizes down that will help with affordability because the developers can, of course put more houses more lots on an acre so um and everybody does it more than an acre and a half lot. So, you know, there are lots of people that want a small yard and a nice house. So, um, so there's, I think there's plenty of places we can improve in um, what is being brought to the county or municipalities to approve and bringing the lot sizes down. But of course, then you've got the neighbor that doesn't want that low income house next to me, you know, and uh, I've never built a house that was cost me less money than the house was that's been there for 30 years. It's always cost me more per square foot. And if anything, my what I built always improved their their value of their home. So um, so we've got to get back to being able to have some smaller lots to be able for us to build them because yeah. they're not out there. You've got to increase the density to bring down that lot. Yeah. So what are some challenges other than what we've talked about that you're facing today as home builders? Enlighten us. <laughs> other than realtor? No. <laughs> yeah, aside from us. <laughs> Homeowners. <laughs> <laughs> expectations, and I'm sure y'all are all seeing it. I don't know if it's a younger generation or what it is, but a lot of people are, are still expecting stuff to be given to them. And uh, it's kind of a, a mission. They're not realistic on a lot of stuff that are coming through. I wish I could get all y'all put on your contracts for disclaimer out to the side. Are you OCD? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had any mental issues to build a show? <laughs> uh, and stuff like that would really help us out a whole lot. Help us too. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of coaching, a lot of stuff that the villagers can do before they bring bring them to us. Because what a lot of people don't understand is me as a custom home builder, I get a lot of you know, plans on the internet, people have big one story houses with wraparound porches and a four car garage, and they don't understand why it's $220 a square foot on a $90,000 lot. They don't have a set, it has to have a uh, $5,500 separate thing. Mm -hmm. And then the driveway is $20,000 compared to $10,000. So there's a lot of stuff that realtors, realtors can do. I always, one of these days, I'm going to write a book on some of the stuff that they job how to kind of coach these people along because it's just stuff that people don't know. And it's the only reason I know it's because I do it for a living. but it's not uncommon for people to come in and want to spend 150 160 dollars a square foot and have a one-story ranch style house with a wraparound porch on it and it's just and what people don't understand is i always tell people just kind of keep in mind a porch runs about 100 dollars a square foot that's not included in your heated square feet so if you got a thousand square feet of porch that shoots your price up real quick you know so there's a lot of stuff that the realtors can do to kind of help out and coach the consumer along when they're buying stuff and you know, I have people call me on a regular basis, and one of the biggest questions is, people call, how much do you charge per square foot? And it's like, what's your house look like? <laughs> is it a three-bedroom? You know, the four bedrooms they've got five baths, six baths. I mean, I always tell people a bath runs about $10,000 for a full bath finished out, you know, with a nicer uh, tile-finished bath. 
And um, so if you got a 2,500 square foot house, that's $4 a square foot right there. You get that for the one bathroom that you had upstairs. So a lot of times people don't understand and, and know that. And it's, um, so that's, I kind of coach them along when they get there. But the realistic part of it, when people bring you plans, it's, it's kind of mind boggling. Sometimes they'll bring you a $900,000 house and think they can get it for $400,000. <laughs> and I'm sure y'all see it all the time. People want y'all to show up and stuff like that. But that would, uh, things like that, just kind of coaching them along and helping out. If anybody ever needs any tips on prices and stuff like that, I mean, I have realtors, a lot of them call me all the time on other houses, and I don't mind talking to them about other people's houses, you know, kind of tell them, because they'll want to know, well, I've got a builder trying to charge this. Is that a fair price? And, you know, most of the time it is a fair price, unfortunately, with the cost of stuff. I even get sticker shot myself a lot of times. I mean, I'll be at houses and I'll sit down. I've got one of my best friends. I'm building a house right now. It's $212 a square foot, and she owns the land already. And But it's a, a 2,000 square foot house with uh, 1,200 square foot of porches with a three car carport on it. So that, and no upstairs, it's got one room upstairs. So that shot her price per square foot through the roof just because of the way it was set up and designed and stuff. So there's a lot of stuff like that that, you know, that we can coach and, and kind of help people along with. Another thing I need y'all to do is quit watching the news. <laughs> uh, Soda County is one of the fastest growing counties in the United States. When everybody else is doing bad, we're still doing good. And when everything does slow down here, we're one of the fastest counties to start back doing good. So. Right now, it's a slow time. It's school time. It always slows down this time of the year. And right now, if you're looking at the news and you're looking at our slowdown, it'll scare you to death. <laughs> so y'all are not going to sleep good at night watching all this. So <laughs> quit watching the news, and it's just that time of the year, and it'll start picking back up, and easing back yeah. up again soon. So, and that's one thing I meant to mention on the presentation was, you know, where this South is located geographically with uh, e-commerce growing, you know, uh, everything going online. You know, we have the million square foot distribution centers, the big factory centers. You know, we have the air with uh, FedEx, we have the river, we have rail. Uh, this area is geographically situated uh, in, in a good place for housing. I mean, you know, we're we're, we're going to see a lot of growth, especially in DeSoto County. Uh, you know, I think you know, you're going to see a lot of people moving south uh, and east uh, out of Memphis because, you know, We've been a bedroom community uh, originally, I think, but we're also starting to get our, our <coughs> industry here now. But uh, another thing I was going to say, it kind of made me think of what you were talking about, Sean, is uh, you know doing a custom home. You know, you know your your construction loan is not going to cover the cost of the house. So if they're looking to build a custom house, they you know as a realtor really need to make sure that there's you know cash reserves and let them know hey, it's, you know it will go you know exceed. You know your construction loan, you know, but so nothing's worse than you know, the builder is working on you know building the you know, best house they can, and the uh, the customer is, is stressed out about the money. You know, it, it is it's a stress situation, but you know, uh, to, you know, don't want to get overextended, you know, ideally. You know, that has been, yeah, you know, I'm sure you'll see some of that. So, Sean, you gave us some ideas as far as what you'd like for people to know going in. You guys have any you want to contribute? Teach us now. <laughs> Anything you'd like for people to know when they come to you? Education. Um, you know. All right. So, is there a particular question that you get asked a lot? What's my house going to be finished? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one of the top ones. It's how soon can we close? Are you dealing with many delays there? Like initially, when all this started, house was going to take four to six months, and then it was a year. Are well, the still problem that I've been seeing a lot is it's not the same thing that delays. Like we got used to the garage doors and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden everything. So we started ordering the garage doors, and we started ordering as soon as you sign a contract with me, we order the windows and doors the next day. Uh, we send you to pick out your appliance the, that week, you know, so we hadn't had a delay on that. Well, all of a sudden we're pecking along, everybody's doing real good, and the fireplace guy called and said, we're out of fireplace, he's going to have it for six weeks. It's like, I this car. And then, then it went from fireplaces to gas logs got behind. They got eight weeks behind on gas logs, so we are telling our homeowners, luckily, unless you got a VA loan, it wasn't that big of a problem, but we are telling our homeowners, you know, hey, they're going to have some more in, and they total six weeks. 
But well, what they didn't tell us is they had 200 people waiting, but they got allocated 50 instead of 200 sets of logs. Wow. So then yeah. they had 150 people PO'd because they didn't get their logs. We know it was April. Everybody wanted their gas logs for some reason. I don't understand that. Like pictures, <laughs> that's that's like, a big thing is allocation. I mean, a lot, and even a lot of us don't know that insulation is being allocated. Right. Um, everything. So we may have a house ready to insulate and call them and tell them give them plenty of time what we've been doing a week we can have and they say oh well we don't have it you know and it may be another week because it's all allocated so there's a lot of days we get a education every day as far as what is what's today going to be yeah. and uh, and it is it's a new day every day so, and not knowing is the hardest part you know, like chris said just Thank you. Everything's smooth and real smooth, and then all of a sudden, well, we're out of insulation. We'll have it for next until in the next week. The bad thing is, the builder, you got stuff set up according, you know, as you'd always design for the next three or four or five days after that. Now you got to turn around and change everything, move it back. So it makes it a lot, a lot trickier to build right now. Well, that's all the canned questions we have. Okay. So we can start. Tommy, do I need to get them the micro? Uh, okay. Larry's loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got three questions. How many platted lots are on the books right now? How many platted lots are on the books right now? That's a good one. The candidate sent me that. 2,000? 3,000? If Johnny thinks it's 3,000, we could probably pull that. I think that's for market graphics, I believe. Yeah. We actually try to, we try to get market graphics to come and speak at uh, one of the luncheons. And we're still working on that. If uh, y'all never heard their presentation or seen their data, it's, it's some of the best data around. Kind of gives you, you know, a lot of information on number of lots, adultery rates, you know, new starts and areas. So, yeah. County and municipality? Yeah, it's actually like Mid South. It's yeah. Memphis area. It's it's the whole Memphis area. takes into part of Memphis as well. Yeah. Like, in, their, in their data. But I think in that, that number, three or four months old. So, what do you think? Are you so that long? I did that 3,000. Uh, I don't, I can't remember. I, I looked at it and it does have it in there. It broke down like so the county for some reason I won't say it. Of those 3,000, it's like 20, some hundred or so actually in the Soto County. But a lot of those lots are old. And, you know, they point out on there that even though it, they may be approved, they, they may be the, well, what I call junk lots, the lots that nobody ever builds on there because left in the subject. Okay. And have any of y'all lost any sales because interest rates went up with a, a pre-sale or a spec house or anything? I'll, I'll repeat that real quick. Has anybody lost any sales? With the interest rate With change. the interest rate change. I, I haven't yet. Wow. I think we lost maybe two. Right? Okay. But it, it was all, and some of it was interest rate, but it was, uh, that's two out of you know, 30. Okay. That's good news. Anybody else? So we're seeing customer sentiment going way down at four hundred and above on house, and you know our prices are going to continue to go up because they absolutely can't sell a widget for the same price. What do you guys see in the future when it comes to that stuff? Are we going to be holding out until spring of next year? On the house is moving in that market, or where do you see this go? I think, uh, you know, like John was saying, you know, with all the new, watching the news with inflation and uh, the spike in the interest rates, I think people were very hesitant to make a move and spend the cash. Uh, they want to see what the economy is doing. The stock market was not doing well. Uh, people lost, you know, some, some investment money there, but uh, for, on paper, I put. I think uh, you know what I've been reading that this you know spring is supposed to the housing market is supposed to loosen up a little bit, and that's kind of what the, they were projecting anyway. That this the end of this year was going to be kind of soft, and then we'll, we'll see a little recovery uh, once supply chain heals as well, and then, you know the, the initial shock of the rise in interest rates. I think a lot of people just got comfortable with that two point eight percent, and uh, they forget where we were. Uh, so yeah, I think spring. Yeah, you know, that's kind of what what. You know, we, my, my company is looking at, you know, we're just kind of rolling through the fall and looking towards spring, summer next year. So, kind of slowing until we get to that point. 
I think so. We have our, I mean, I'm in the, I'm in the I'm building and selling in the that number uh, it's got 550 or 650 mil, so okay. it's slowed down a good bit. I think also to your point, what Chris was saying earlier, there's still no inventory. So I mean, that, you know, the homes that are sitting on the market, they may be sitting on the market, whereas they were getting multiple offers, I think you're seeing homes that are sitting on the market for a month, maybe two, instead of, you know, selling as soon as they get some more multiple offers. Which I think we've all been spoiled too with the with the multiple offers and <laughs> and uh, you know I've got five houses in Bakersfield and I've been holding off on them to get them, try to get them I was gonna be smart and get them completely finished and put them on the market so I didn't have to go back and change a bunch of stuff and and uh, now it's gonna take longer to sell them you know because I did that so the, it would now looking back I would rather have had the headache of, of changing a few things and getting them sold but uh, but it, it's back a month is probably back where it used to be years ago. That's just normal time, you know, three, four, five weeks or something like that before you can sell out. We've got spoiled just like everybody got spoiled on the interest rate. We got spoiled by putting them on putting them on the market and having sold the next day. So that's just something we'll have to get used to and get that out of our mind for right now. I think that's where most of us have been over the past couple of years is we waited to get the house finished before we put it on the market. And now we're getting the houses finished and we put them on the market and they're setting for a month and we're getting back to you know three four years ago where uh, and maybe it's time for us to go to listing the houses again when we start them and instead of waiting to the end and it just scares a lot of us builders when we get to the point of them having finished and then they and then they set you know whereas we've not had to deal with that the last couple of years okay. Um, outside of Soto County, do you have an area that you think you're going to see growth in for new construction outside of Soto? I personally think Marshall County is going to start growing more. It's, uh, I can already see it growing out that direction. And it's already getting harder to find lots out that way. And the land cost, they think they're DeSoto County is the only problem. And, <laughs> and, and uh, But it don't matter if you get the land for cheaper than the development cost. Johnny will tell you, it costs the same to develop in Marshall County as it does in DeSoto County, you know, a road to road. It don't matter where it is. So that's the that's the biggest issue. And, and as Marshall County starts, as their comps start raising up a little bit, I think they'll start seeing a whole lot more houses going out uh, Marshall County way. And they're already, I'm getting a lot more calls and doing a lot more out in Marshall County already, but it's just harder to find lots out there. And then it's harder to get them appraised. But what's happening is a lot of people had lots that they've been sitting on for years. So luckily the lots are paid off or closed. So that's helping offset the appraised value. So. They don't have infrastructure that a lot of the county has to get started with lots as well. So it's going to take a little time to build that up before you know a lot of that's going to be on septic and some of it on well but they did i know they're the north central is running you know high speed internet out of marshall county now which is it's big for people and with COVID, a lot of people you know working from home and never went back and so instead of living close to the city they're only five five acres in marshall county and working on we have a question online uh, on the Zoom, it says, uh, regarding new construction and what price ranges are you seeing the most current growth and any insights projecting over the next couple of years? So I guess what's the most common price range is what I gather that question is for new construction? Yeah. My, my, my personal range from about 500000 to a million dollars. Um, of course, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of million dollar houses. I've got one going at Dawkins Farm right now that's about 8,000 square feet that, uh, with an elevator in it. And uh, But uh, most people are calling it around 500,000. I get more calls for 400,000. Unfortunately, I can't build anything for 400,000. Well, yeah, especially if there's elevators. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the South is leading and they were, and so the county is leading the state pretty much for building. So, are our legislators helping with this allocation problem? Like that? Allocation of utilities? And or? your source of supplies. So, um, you know, there's really nothing they can do. You know, I'm I'm saying, nationwide. I would say a little bit. Nationwide, maybe. NAHB, you know, the, you know, NHB is, is a, 
But honestly, you know, part of advocacy, lobbying, you know, get meeting with these legislators uh, to help pass uh, bills and fight bills that, that hurt, you know, uh, production time and the, you know, the well, state level, you know, so much, so many of our materials. I will say there's uh, two new sawmills that are going to be opening up uh, in this city, one in Winona and another one uh, here. In the next 12 months, as I said. so um, there may be some state money that was those that was, that was, that was, I believe. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we we can definitely go youth more sewer. Uh, you know, they a lot of times they depend on the developer to they extend the sewer. You know, and, you know they work with us to uh, run those extensive sewer. That, that helps. And I know, like over in Williams Ridge, we're building over here, and the developers having to put in Starlane Road as he puts in the subdivision, and that cost is passed on to the people that are buying those lots. You know, mm -hmm. so um, so there are ways that we could, with county, have help in in these lots and not having to do all of these um, extensions of roads that really doesn't fall into. Uh, that particular inside the subdivision, you know, I was um, kind of amazed. I driving going through the lumber yard the other day, it kind of dawned on me all of our uh, new commercial right up the road. If you notice, there is no none of those commercial buildings are adding lanes. But you go to a new subdivision anywhere in Minnesota County, and they are putting in a new road on the front of that subdivision. They being the developer. They yes. being the developer, which is being added to the lot calls, Excuse which me. is being passed on to those new home buyers. So, uh, so there are ways to improve some lot calls. I don't know that we would be able to do that, but. Um, but you know there are there's lots of areas that we have to extend sewer to the cura that's maybe going across land that the developer doesn't even own you know so um, so there's time and money and things of that nature that um, that it all adds up so it, it's funny with the but, uh, the county always talks about they hate going up on taxes and you know, 20, 30 years or however long it is, but they turn around and make the developers and builders pay for all this extra stuff that's bringing all the extra houses in, that's bringing the extra tax dollars to keep it from going up. Not to mention all the fees. Yes. Water meters going up, you yeah. know, South Haven, and I pick on them just because it's the most recent. It's, uh, they went up uh, a good bit recently and um, so they were changing all their water meters out to digital water meters. Yeah. Well, the only people that were paying for those digital water meters was people that were buying new homes. So all the people that lived in South Haven, they were getting their digital water meters at their homes swapped out at no expense, but the expense was coming to the new homes that were being built. So, um, so those... And our unit is no there's and uh, uh so fees, right? Yeah, so right. fees add a lot that the general public doesn't ever see, you know. So yeah, my, my favorite personal fee is and I and I argue with the lady at Hernando about this all the time, is the cura, and that's for the future sewer systems of the soda county. So, <laughs> so if you live out in Ingram's Bill on the other side of the chatterbox out there and you build a house, you gotta pay a thousand dollars before you get your permit. For the future sewer system of Minnesota County, even though there won't never be a sewer system in our lifetime out there, but it, before every house is built in Minnesota County, we have to pay that thousand dollar fee on every single house that we build, no matter where it is in Minnesota County. No matter it's in the middle of the city. Yeah. And on yeah. top of that fee, I just had to, the subdivision I'm doing, I just had to add 3,000 feet of sewer line to my subdivision to tie into the crew. Is, uh, Manhole and it'll it'll be the, and I'll pay the same the crew of fee when I go to pull permits on each house. Well, then you if you're building in a municipality, not not only are you paying the thousand dollars, you're also paying the city sewer fee. So, um, so you're actually paying twice. Two sewer fees. 
for the sewer fees, plus the developer has always already paid for the privilege of putting it in his subdivision. So it's actually three times. So a lot of fun stuff y'all don't get to see all the time. So. <laughs> but that's also stuff that makes the houses go up more. Yes. Is that, that good? You guys want to talk about your projects? Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I told uh, the guys, you know, uh, just give that opportunity to uh, tell you a little, about, a little bit about uh, maybe some projects they have going on or some services they offer. Uh, I'm just going to work. So, uh, we've got a the development on Bahelia Road uh, near Green Tea and Jaybird called East Lake. It's a 134 lot total development, uh, first phase. It's 32 lots. We're uh, about half acre lots in there. Uh, you know, we have walking trails, uh, clubhouse, we have three lakes. Uh, the, you know, starting the low five on mid 500s up to six, 650. And uh, this is a, our my salesperson here, Katie Yoki. And uh, speaking of Katie, I will real quick Katie Ortiz, she's our new executive officer for the Home Builders Association. She's new to the Home Builders Association this year, doing a great job. So, as I mentioned, so she kind of Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I, I do good the home building, also do uh, quite a bit of commercial building, commercial construction, tent build outs, office spaces, uh, doctor's offices, stuff like that. Excuse me, for yes. the commercial, you do have square footage, or you cannot, like how much would you charge? How much do I charge for square foot? It depends on what type of commercial. <laughs> uh, we can talk more about this. So, uh, I'm with Skyline Construction, and we do have uh, we got a subdivision doing pre sales in now on Pinewood, which is a good well and state line. And those start at around 300000 305000 I might be wrong on the price. Don't hold me to that. Um, and then we've got another subdivision that we're doing pre sales in now that's in the Lewisburg area, which is Crosswinds Phase One, which would be a total of 180 lots total. Uh, the first 45 are going to be the small or the smaller square footage lots, which are 2,000 to 2,200, and they're going to start in the uh, they're going to start in the 360 to 450 range, probably on those. Um, and then we've also got another subdivision going in that we're fixing to start pre sales in the next month or so in Creekside, which will be uh, on Hern in Hernando. Which will also be in that same price point, around, starting at around uh, 360 to 370, and then uh, hopefully the first of next year we'll have another subdivision and uh, that we just got approved that'll be in Walls. That's uh, be right off 301, and it's more of your smaller smaller square footage. We haven't done prices yet, but it is approved at 1800 square foot, and uh, the uh, so and then we've also got. One another one in Lewisburg that'll be enclave, but hopefully in the next couple of months that will be uh we'll be doing pre sale in there as well. So across the town before you started. Across the town will be started in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think we should have this so we have um, one subdivision or project that we have going right now that we're excited about. It's taking a little bit of time to get off the ground. Is over in Williams Ridge, we have a 55 and older um, section in there that is gated and um, it is strictly 55 and older within the subdivision. Um, prices are starting around 350 in there and um, would love, I think we're trying to get some information out and probably do a realtor's lunch here in the next few weeks over there. But uh, we're kind of excited about that. There'll be a good many of those lots in the remaining phases of Williams Ridge. And then we also have some homes in Watson Place that are starting in that 360 range. So I think um, to y'all's point uh, earlier about affordability, I think the 300s, the mid 350s is going to be the starting that's your lower starting and houses right now in the Southern County. So, and going up from there. So. And this would be like 2200 square feet. 
Um, those two. About two thousand is where they go fifty five and older, and and also lots of. Um, I have houses. I I build pretty much anything. I'll build your tree house. It don't make me no difference. <laughs> um, I have houses. My, most of my houses range from, like I said, four hundred thousand dollars up. Um, I do stuff a little different than the rest of the guys. If you've got a lot or something like that, we'll build it on it for Chris. I'll, they'll probably all do that, I'm sure. But uh, we do a lot of custom stuff. So a lot of times, like I was saying earlier, people sit on their lots for a while, pay down on it, get some money saved up. And so we'll build, you know, pretty much uh, DeSoto County, Marshall County, it really don't matter. Um, I've got lots and houses in Bakersfield right now. I've got a subdivision I'm fixing to develop uh, on Slocum Road called Hunter's Ridge. Just here from the back of the bell. It'll be coming online. There's four lots already ready, and the rest will be ready in the springtime of next year, probably. And then uh, hopefully, probably the springtime of next year, I'll have more lots coming on at Fairview Road, which will be two to seven acre lots. But it's, it's actually by Hay address, but in Minnesota County, but it's right at the line. But like I said, we'll pretty much build on any lot anywhere you can find. So if you got anybody, that All right, that's it. Anybody got any final questions? Last chance. All right. Quick announcement for the association. So uh, next Thursday, August 25th, we have a sporting play and shoot at Mallard Croft. Uh, Spots still available. I think there's a flyer on the table for that. I'd love to have it all there, uh, whether it's a participation shooting or just I don't have one. Or uh, as a sponsorship, we definitely welcome that. Uh, we'll have a lot of prizes, gold prizes, uh, first and third place. And uh, so we'd love for uh, some of y'all to come out for that. Uh, also, we have Paul Paul coming up. And I think that's, and uh, you know, we're going to be Fourteenth of October, they'll be at Wedgwood, um, and then in November, I mentioned earlier, we have uh, our luncheon set uh, in mid November. That uh, it'll be at the Career Tech Center in the uh, uh, West, the Federal Career Tech Center, and uh, so the, I think the students are cooking, and that, that's a really neat place. Uh, you know, they, they teach skills from the electrical, plumbing, HVAC, framing, you know, carpentry, you know, whatever. So that'll be a little bit. Uh, thank you all again for having us. This is our first uh, builder panel we've ever done. Thank you, Amanda, again for having us. Uh, thank you all.